the lover man. Oh, good morning. Uh, hola, bon dia to you. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube and podcast. And uh, yeah, you can see from that screen if you were here early. Um, and my lighting's a bit different. Look, I'm all looking a bit sort of pale and pasty, I think. That's because Mrs. M has taken my studio lighting and is using it elsewhere in the house because it is our 300th podcast episode. This show will be the 300th entry uh, to our collection of podcasts and 15,000 downloads. So I'm so chuffed with that. And um, big up to all the podcast listeners who do it in their headphones, as it were. And um, yeah, I'd really want to say hi to you because you're like the Wombles or the Borrowers, the people we don't see, but we know you're there because of all these thousands of downloads and a little bit of feedback that we get now and then. Uh, somebody sent me a message. And I'm always very grateful. Uh, just a simple little line yesterday excellent podcast today and that was talking to uh, adam freeman of the hungry couple uh, yesterday so really um a light-hearted and celebratory mood here as we um celebrate our 300th podcast episode and it looks like the um studio kit is melting <laughs> with these changes of lighting and some good mornings coming in as well which is fantastic bon dia carl to the wine seek i consigo which i learned from philomena uh, early, well, a few days ago, a week ago now, wasn't it? Uh, to you, FD Devane, how are you? I consigo. And Wayne in the UK, I think, hola, bon dia, todos. Really busting out the Portuguese in an impressive way there, Wayne. Looking forward to having a beer with you when you get here. Bon dia, Carl. Congratulations on 300 wonderful episode, episodes. Thank you so much, uh, Joseph, over there in Funda. Weather report from... Uh, the south, bon dia, Carl. Bit windy. I'm talk I'm assuming they're talking about the weather, but clear blue skies in Pera, not that Pera, the other Pera. Uh, Claire and Steve, thank you very much. And we will have a look at the news, the weather uh, around the country as well. Some interesting news stories today. And we're talking about those pesky pests. Uh, some wag on Facebook put that there's a they were enjoying the little window between when the flies go to bed and before the mozzies come out. And you may well. Um, have been um, subject to that and enjoyed that moment. Uh, last night, uh, or the, may I recommend this to enjoy in that window? This is the possible hall of our first Hall of Fame wine, this uh, Marialva Barida wine from 2015. Neil reckons that 2015 was a good year. And I've got to agree drinking this, uh, celebrating last night, not just the, um, the podcast, uh, 300 episodes, but a lovely um, tie-up with um, Expats Portugal last night. Did a fantastic uh, webinar. They they asked me to host a webinar with them. Uh, delighted to do so. Had a great time talking to Peter von Noonan, who is a buyer's advocate. Helps people with everything uh, coming to Portugal. And he's a great bloke. I, I don't know what it is about the Brits and the Dutch, but they seem to hit it off. And, and chatting to Peter was no exception last night. And we had a lot of fun. A lot of people tuned in to the call, to the webinar on Expats Portugal. Another one coming up soon, all about education. Uh, looking at uh, whether to go public, private, international, or even homeschooling. I'm going to slide that into the conversation as well. Although I think um, as far as homeschooling goes, people have had enough of that for the moment, haven't they? What with um, the um, having to homeschool their kids uh, during the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic. We'll see. Maybe some people have really bonded and loved it, and the kids don't want to go back to school. We shall see. Morning, Carl. Been a long time since I've been called a womble. I hope in a good way, uh, Gary. Which one are you? Uh, a great uncle Bulgaria or Orinoco? To the bay, obrigado. That's fantastic, FD Devane. What do we say now? Quito, un café? Quito, um, cerveja? Maybe a bit early for that, but uh, let's continue that conversation um, as Philomena guided us. Uh, very popular, uh, talking of our podcast, that's a very popular one, uh, getting a lot of replays there. And if you didn't see it, she really helped us with some basic beginners Portuguese. Okay, Mrs. M looking beautiful in the green room. Um, and she is going to be talking because we we, ha we have these uh, episodes under our belt now uh, of the podcast variety. And um, no show um, is possible without a team effort, right? And um, well, I couldn't be here in Portugal. I couldn't do this if it wasn't for Luisa. And she'll be joining me to talk about it. And if you've got any questions for her, what's it like to be married to me? It would be one possible question. Uh, she's smiling at that. She hasn't just got up and left. Um, so you could ask her anything you like. She'll be with us in, in, a, in a little while after we've done the news and weather. Good morning, Carl. Hope you're well. I'm really well. Thanks, Barbara. Hope you are too. Uh, thank you for that. Lovely to hear from you. Yes, especially uh, jubilant this morning. And um, 
Let's do that then. Let's have a quick look at the weather. You know what the weather's like where you are if you stick your head out the window. But still, we do like to look at this bigger picture, don't we? 18 degrees currently in Lisbon, 24 to look forward to. A little bit cloudy, but full week from Sunday of sunny days with highs of up to 28 degrees. Porto, to give you an idea of the north, 16 degrees, currently overcast, 21 to look forward to today. And just like Lisbon and probably a lot of the rest of Portugal in many ways, uh, the cloud will go tomorrow, giving way to a nice mild 23 degree Sunday and onwards. Monday, Tuesday looking pretty good, but the cloud returning uh, midweek next week in Porto. Coimbra, currently overcast as well at 16 degrees. 25 degrees to look forward to, however, today. Going to be a cloudy day, a bit of cloud tomorrow, but that will lift. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, great days of 28 and 29 degrees to look forward to. Farrow, Dan, let's go in the south finally. Unless you want to request the weather in your district, let me know. Just bung that in the comments and I will look at the weather in your district for the coming week. But Farrow, to conclude with for now, 19 degrees and sunny. And 27 to look forward to today. A nice weekend, bit of cloud on Sunday possibly, but still 30 degrees and then lovely temperatures Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of uh, 27, 28 and 29 degrees. Obviously, as the temperature rises, you've got to be careful with the fires. And uh, fogush.pt is the site to keep an eye on. I think that's the best resource um, just to find out what's going on. Uh, you know, if you are concerned, just keep an eye on that. And obviously, um, check out our fire forest fire preparedness podcast as well uh, which i hope has been helpful and useful and reassuring <clears throat> mainly to people so uh news then uh foreigners in portugal that'll be us right um hold on a minute are you over the phone incident yet kind of gary a little bit of um you know trauma hanging around after my iphone got put in the pooey nappy changing water if you don't know that story just to give you a bit of an idea there to put you off your breakfast uh peter Oh, she's waving at me. Did you want to speak to us now? Sorry, you're waving there, love. Yes, um, that wasn't pooey nappy water. I was I was cleaning a wound. On oh, mini. gosh, okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, yeah, kind of slightly disjointed, but interesting. Mm. Go on. Um, well, can you hear me now? Yeah, we'll just carry on. It's now? fine. It'll, it'll catch up with itself, I'm sure. Okay. Um, yes. It was yes, never. Yes, it yes. was never pooey water. It was never pooey water. It was. It was. Um, it was just a jug of water. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We'll come back to that controversy a little bit later on. Um, actually, let's leave her on the screen because she's so beautiful. Um, do this like Richard and Judy style. Just a quick hello from a windy and cool Castaneda de Pera off to the weekly market in Tamar with Mr. Ferry. Uh, Beer is going to be involved in that, obviously. And then to pick up my spices and chilies from the chili experience. How fantastic. Is that Peter or someone else? Because uh, I'm going to be talking to the spice guy, Peter, soon. Uh, the other Peter. Um, okay. Bon dia. Lovely. So many people here this morning. Bon dia. Vosés, Lindes Almas. Good morning to you, lovely souls from Owen. Um, yes, the phone incident, well, probably that's not going to go away anytime soon, is it? Uh, with the controversy I stirred with that. But I am looking for a new iPhone if you've got one in a drawer somewhere. Um, hello from Julie and Clint. Sunny Fundau, good morning to you too. Lovely to have your company this morning. And Jeannie in Belgium. I'm, best, I'm still in Belgium, Jeannie. Bon dia, Carl, and everyone here. Just back from a short visit in Portugal. Oh, so back in, back in, back in Belgium from Portugal. Hope you had a great time, Jeannie. Why didn't you come and have a coffee or a beer with us? uh appropriately distance obviously <laughs> as everyone isn't doing right now i can hear perfectly says lisa so you can be heard louisa by lisa which is the main thing uh, even if our, our connection isn't um, working especially well but i'm sure it will settle down a uh, bit of news now i think this is fascinating now let's have a look at how many of us foreigners there are here uh, in portugal because reported to be at an all-time high uh, the um Portugal news here, foreigners in Portugal on all-time high, published today, and there'll be a lot of comments on this, I suspect. It just pushes people's buttons, doesn't it? The foreign population residing in Portugal increased in 2019 for the fourth consecutive year, totaling, look at this, oh, this is a population of 10 million people, and a total of 590,348 citizens, the highest figure recorded by the Foreigners and Border Service since its emergence in 1976, revealed the SEF which is where us estrangeros need to register. And that's why, of course, they're so busy and why it's, it's such a, um, 
a difficult, challenging process sometimes to get an appointment. But look how many people they're dealing with. In 2019, for the fourth consecutive year, there was an increase in the foreign resident population with an increase of 22.9% compared to 2018, totaling 590,348 foreign citizens holding a residence permit. The highest, and that's just the ones with permits. The highest value recorded by SCF since its emergency in 76 indicates the Immigration Borders and Asylum Report, RIFA. According to SCF, and let's have a look at the various numbers of nationalities here. Brazilians remain the main foreign country resident in the country, as you would expect, representing 25.6% of the total last year, the highest figure since 2012. At the end of 2019, 151,304 Brazilians lived in Portugal, followed by Cape Verdeans, 37,436. And obviously that's to do with the old Portuguese uh, colonies, empire. A British, though, a third here, 34,338. Very grateful. Romanians, 31,065. Ukrainians, 29,718. Chinese, 27,839. Italians wouldn't have expected that, 25,408. I need to mute Mrs. M's microphone. She, what's she doing there? Anyway, let's start. We'll, we'll just keep our eye. <laughs> was she doing stuff? Brilliant. Okay. Uh, so we've got Italians at 25,408, French at 23,125. I guess that's a kind of reciprocal arrangement, uh, what with there being so many Portuguese in, in uh, France as well. And Angolans at 22,691. The reefer highlights the increase in citizens from the United Kingdom and Italy, in this case due to citizens of Italian ah, nationality being native of Brazil. What an interesting world we live in. Uh, the report found the immigrant. And what's the idea? Why? Why so many Brits? Brexit, presumably. The report found that immigrants live mainly on the coast. I think this is interesting. With sixty-eight point six percent registered in the districts of Lisbon, Faro, and Stabal, uh, totaling four hundred and five and eighty-nine residents, cit resident citizens. While in two thousand and eighteen, there were three hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred and sixty-three. Read more for yourself at theportugalnews.com. Very grateful to them. And I hope their crowdfunder's going well because they've had a real knock um, during the pandemic. And it's a hard time to be running a newspaper, basically, but I don't know where I'd be without their um, uh, excellent work there. Alongside uh, Portugal Resident, where we'll go next, just very briefly, because um, you might be aware of a, of a new orientation for the show. I, I've put up a new video on um, our Facebook page and a new strap line is, is loving life in Portugal naturally, okay? Because I'm not sure quite how to, whilst we're on the, the, the matter of this 300th episode, I'm not sure um, exactly the way forward. I mean, I've got a really good, I'm 80% I'm there, but the 20%, you know, I think we should talk about because I think it's about homesteading. I think it's about self-sufficiency. But uh, trying to articulate that, it's mainly about nature it's about becoming natural again it's about enjoying the nature of portugal which i think is you know whilst there are lots of political things we could fall out about who doesn't want to be more and better connected with nature and what better place to do it than in portugal so that i think is is the way forward let me know what you think about that uh eloise good morning to you bon dia from a cloudy moody panella uh it gets like that sometimes there doesn't it um, hola, bon dia. It's 1 a.m. here in San Francisco. So we're very grateful for your company, Esther. Uh, I'm hoping you're enjoying a Portuguese wine at this time of the day where you are. Uh, California, and I should be sleeping, but I saw this pop up, so here I am. Enjoyed the webinar yesterday with Expats Portugal. Thank you very much for that feedback. I did as well. Had a ball, actually. Uh, so, Esther, thank you for joining us. We do this every morning, uh, every weekday morning, for sure. Um, so please join us again. And, um, yeah, chill uh, there in San Francisco, California. Um, and it may be that my uh, voice is quite soporific, would help me get to sleep. Distance and no time. Oh, okay. Uh, Jeannie's excuse for not meeting up. Next time we will. Please do that, Jeannie. It'd be lovely to meet you. And uh, we've got lots of lots more comments coming in, which is fantastic. Uh, not many Spanish here. That's, yeah, as, as you might expect, or they're just not admitting it. They don't want to say <laughs> that they're in Portugal, so they haven't registered and to have to swallow their pride to be here because of the rivalry um, between the Portuguese and the Spanish, of course, which is a source of amusement to me, I have to say, as someone who can step away from that argument at, 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 a, at a whim. Okay, um, next bit of, I mean, talking about nature, I'm talking about um, homesteading, I'm talking about the future, I'm talking about how Portugal is looking to go carbon neutral by 2050, and just a, a few lines here. I've got two Mrs. M's in the green room now. 
She's cloned herself, which could mean excellent progress on the housekeeping front. Um, face some flack for that, as well as the um, iPhone gate as well. Secre Secretary of State for Energy. Let's have a look at him now. Um, this is Joao Galamba has reiterated the government's focus on relaunching the economy within the framework of its pledge to become carbon neutral by 2015. Well done, Portugal. Let's see if we can do that quicker. Portugalresident.com for this story. Um, yes, no one taking credit for writing this. Uh, thus, the plan to start producing hydrogen. I don't know about hydrogen. Is this a good move forward for those environmentally, environmentally minded in our group here? Comparatively cheaply and export it as well. Not only to use it, but to export it, presumably, says Galamba. The ENH2 strategy, sounds like a road, will create a, or railway line, a whole new industry as well as much needed jobs. Tenders for the first hydrogen project in Sinesh are open till July 17th. So if you're a hydrogen hobbyist, you, you can put a tender into the government. He, held, he told a meeting today in Lisbon, we want to produce a lot of hydrogen and cheaply. That is a line worthy of Donald Trump, isn't it? We want to produce a lot of hydrogen and cheaply, lots of hydrogen, big numbers. Um, the Sinesh project represents an investment of roughly 2.8 billion euros and will, according to Galamba, put Sinesh and Portugal on the map with regards to the industry. Your views, please. Is hydrogen a good way ahead in terms of becoming carbon neutral by 2050? Is that a good source of power? It has come up. Uh, from a number of sources for me recently. So I'm interested to find out more and I'm hoping you can help me with that. So which of, uh, let's um, unmute this one. There are two of you. Why are there two of you, Lo? Um, I wanted to have two connections. So that, so that if you, could, if you if couldn't hear, <laughs> so that if you couldn't hear me yeah. um, with, with this setup, that I could switch to another one without, you know, ruining your show. Okay. Um, How about you. that for professionalism? Well, professional. She should be doing this, not me. Uh, no Belgium, <laughs> as um, Jeannie. Yeah, I haven't got any numbers for, I haven't got any big numbers for um, Belgians in Portugal. I'm sure you can drill down further if you go to the website, Jeannie, but you're underrepresented thus far. Good morning to you, Louise. And let me formally welcome you to this, the 300th edition of the Good Morning Portugal. <laughs> How are you today? Well, I'm really excited and I'm so happy for you. I, you know, I'm really um, delighted that, that this is, you know, this has expanded to 300 shows because when you started it, you know, it, it was like one of your crazy ideas, isn't it? Um, in fact, <laughs> may, I, may I take this opportunity to interview you? Would that be okay? Yeah, go on then. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, called pesky pests, so that could be quite appropriate. We could talk about flies and mozzies and yeah. uh, rats and mice and ticks yeah. uh, to, uh, okay. as a cheerful way of finishing the show today. Okay, okay. So I won't take over the whole show about you. But <laughs> I feel, you know, this is, this is, you know, you're sort of like creating a, a movement of kind and I'm always fascinated um, by your motivations to do things. So what was your motivation for the GMP? And how <laughs> did, you know, how did the name come up and... Tell us a bit about it. You know, you sometimes criticise my Donald Trump impersonation. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it looks like it's snowing here for one thing. But uh, Gary has just said there, I didn't know Jimmy Cagney was ever a US president. Very <laughs> I'm doing my best here. <laughs> All right, I'll work. <laughs> so did you say what possessed me to do this? <clears throat> yeah. You know, what, what, what went through your mind when you thought, I'm going to give up you know, a good hour of every morning to, to oh, well, this talk. Is a, a recent iteration. When it, was, I think it started off as a radio show, didn't it, from our back bedroom yeah. in Arawera. Uh, That's right. The first thing, when we were living near Lisbon. And I just thought I'd love to do a radio show, show called Good Morning Portugal. So we did that, and that was like an hour long, and we had practice Portuguese guys, Joel and Rui, talking to us, and um, various people. People, yeah, I mean, it, the whole idea was to document our – journey partly wasn't it and to be of a, a help to people doing a similar journey which has become you know the whole idea of expats and explorers coming to Portugal so yeah looking at our own journey here which began in September 2017 so Nick, Nick moving on right. to three years now um yeah. yeah just wanted to document our journey and be of help to other people in a similar position and then I think maybe six months ago a few months ago Paul Ryan of Village Kitchen said, we definitely need an expats radio show here. 
and I don't know what moved him to say that, but I thought, yeah, okay, we'll get we'll dust off the Good Morning Portugal radio show, and um, we'll do that. So we did. I think we did the radio show again, and we did an evening radio show. And we're looking at all different kinds of formats, but throughout all that time, I've always what you know, I just can't help myself recording a little bit of audio every now and then. So it's always resorted to some sort of podcast production, whether that be just a little bit of vocabulary and language and a very brief thing, yeah. or a full on live stream now which it is which becomes the podcast and we can't seem to avoid doing any less than sort of 30 or 45 minutes each morning so and i'm really glad you know i'm really grateful to people for their forbearance and commitment to that as well which is which i'm I'm really grateful to everyone who's part of this community that's awesome um and yeah you've you've created a really beautiful community um that's kind of sprung up hasn't it it's it's growing all the time as well yeah so what did you say I, I th- these people are lovely who come and, j- and join us every morning. <laughs> they really are. We're it's really, really nice. off. You know, we've got our, our wonderful wine club that we do. So people, I think, are developing their specialist interests and angles and uh, mm-hmm. having an output for that. I mean, I love Peter's um, contributions of Portuguese culture, you know, particularly where he lives. Love to see more of that from people wherever they are. Eloise leading the wine club brilliantly. Gary, Neil involved in the wine club, but you know, people coming at this from all different angles. Yeah. And I think this is the, this is the way forward is that this be a sort of focal point for us all collaborating. Cause I think that's the spirit of the future. We need each other um, to mm-hmm. face this uncertain time that I am calling the, the meerkat versus the ostrich times. Are we meerkat? Yes. Like you can do your meerkat impersonation now if you wish, which should be better than my, <laughs> or donald trump are we are we looking <laughs> at what's coming towards us because you know this is a light-hearted thing i hope and fun mm. and upbeat, but i think there is you know there, there were challenging and difficult times coming and um yes. you know, i hope to serve that need of how we stick together how we develop the the different kinds of intelligence and resourcefulness and resilience to face an uncertain and possibly difficult future Mm. You you started to answer, um, you know, one of my other questions was, which was, you know, where do you see this going? <laughs> but I'd like to um, take you back a little bit before we actually came out to Portugal. Oh, what was it about Portugal that made you want to come here? Uh, a first, you, know, you were talking about resiliency. You know, what were we thinking about um, that made it sort of imperative that we skip the UK or <laughs> oh, yeah because we didn't we didn't plan it meticulously like a lot of expats do do we we just no got in like, our camper van <laughs> that's how we do everything it would appear um but this is an interesting point this idea of growing up possibly because Adam asked me yesterday after we finished we had a great chat yesterday um talking to Adam Freeman of the hungry couple because uh, he's aware of these sort of bigger political issues and talks about them yeah and uh, he said to me he kind of challenged me after when we were talking after he said, you know, this thing of homesteading and coming to Portugal, are you escaping? Were you running away from something or are you running towards something? And I said, mm-hmm. I've got to say, um, at the beginning, it was, this is to answer your question. It was running away. You know, I thought yeah. what's the best country to run away to? Would I go to France or Spain? Cause that's where Brits went, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago and up until about 10 years ago, those were the principal destinations and Portugal came into that, equation or you know range of possibilities and um i'm very grateful to i think she's gina shaw uh, a vegan doctor who i was interviewing for, for a podcast i was working on and i was telling him about this predicament like i can't be you know, this is 10 years ago i'm in the uk thinking i've got to get away i can't i can't bear this what's happening and this was you know some time before obviously before brexit and pandemic and all these recent phenomenon phenomena um do, 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 do. And um, <laughs> I would, um, I thought Portugal. Okay, I'll check it out. And she said, "You've got to check out the pure Portugal people." And then you know that began, and I, I came out then twenty two thousand seven or two thousand. I think it's two thousand seven, and visited Portugal. Stayed with Sophie, who is behind Pure Portugal in Tabua, in, and this is this great part of um, central Portugal. You know, this which is also. Mm-hmm inescapable for me and us i think um but it, that was it it was an escape at that time planning an escape thinking how do i get out of the uk i don't like the way this is going and my uncle had told me a long time ago to move to australia that was in 19 in the 90s he told me you know um this is it's not going he was visiting the uk from australia uh, he was a, a chinese man and a, and a, and a, a you know an immigrant to australia 
he said, you should move to Australia. This is in the 90s. So I've always had that. I mean, I come from a family of nomads, gypsies, and people who move mm. around. You know, we don't know we don't know where our home is, to quote Nelly Furtado. Uh, we just know where our I don't know where my home is. I just know where my soul is or something like that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, it was an escape. And But now I think we're a bit more grown up because you've joined me in this quest and we've had to grow up, haven't we, in this? this that's what happens. And the escape from does become, or the running from can become a running to, if that makes sense to people. Mm. You know, because we've got a vision of what, what we want to do and how we want to go about it and to make it sustainable not just for us, but for, you know, the planet, the whole, you know, a big, a big picture, not just a, not just a selfish desire to run away from all my problems, but um, it, it, st it still is, but it's also good. There's a bigger aspect to it as well. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um, so another thread I'd really like to um, pick up on, um, because I don't think people know this, but you've tirelessly um, been involved in broadcasting in one way, shape or form, haven't you? Um, when was the first time you started broadcasting or communicating? Because I know you've done it in so many different guises, like writing and music, and you know, talk us through that and why that's so important to you. Because I lived in, I was a DJ um, some time ago in the '80s dance boom, and part of that, I wasn't a very good DJ. Although I am, I am um, one of the few DJs to be scratching on a top ten record. Um, no, top 20 record. Um, yeah. So I got, I got a claim to fame there, and I was involved in the 80s dance scene. And the, the favorite thing for me was getting involved in pirate radio from seedy kind of locations in Sheffield, blocks of flats, where you would, you would, I don't know how we got in. We, the key was under the mat or something. You'd go in, and there would be turntables and, um, you know, a mixer, and you'd take your own records with you and this is like carrying bags of vinyl in those days so it was obvious what was going on in these must flats. be really heavy and then, obvious then yeah. turning up or just before the hour you know on one or two hour rotation there would be a cassette i think playing in the background when you got there if you were the first one in and then i'd start playing vinyl um in the morning i did a, I, I, lo I loved the morning slot so i was doing morning radio on a on a pirate station playing black black dance music and that was the beginning. I knew that was really exciting. And yeah, sometimes in the evening, I think one evening we, I took a friend of mine who was visiting, he lives in Australia now. Um, and we went to do the show on a Sunday night, I think it was. And then suddenly the lights went out and the turntables just ground to a halt. And so it was playing like, you know, we're full on raving, the music was playing, we were enjoying it, sat there. And then, and the turntable stopped. The <laughs> went out, and I thought, oh! The, there's going to be people abseiling down the outside of the building. It's the DTI, the Department of Trade and Industry, are busting us, and I'm going to be the one who cops for it, and they're going to confiscate all my records and find me and stuff. And so we gathered all our stuff together and ran out of the um, – it was like a scene from the Sweeney or you know some sort of Guy Ritchie movie, grabbed all our stuff, let the door slam behind us, um, ran down the stairs. Obviously, don't go in the lift in an adventure movie, do you? Unless, you know, that's part of climbing into the lift shaft like Bruce Willis. But we ran down the stairs into the car, drove home, phoned the guy who ran the station, Boss Man, he was called. He's actually called Boss Man. Boss Man! No really bad. <laughs> we got raided. I think we got raided. He said, no, no, mate, no, no. He just um, you needed to put some more money in me to... <laughs> <laughs> Another of my impersonations, that wasn't very good either for anyone of any of you who know Boss Man. <laughs> but yeah, that was the start. That was the start. Uh, pirate radio. So I've just incriminated. Yeah. Me. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, so you start off with music, but you've ended up sort of getting more and more what, ethical or community led. What's been the motivation there? Like, how has that gone? I've tried to get more ethical. Um, well, you, you left the music for that reason, didn't you? Because it was oh, yeah, really didn't, uh, yeah, got much fun. A bit peed off in the music industry, yes, but couldn't stay away from doing love. Just I love doing radio, and then you know, before we yeah. left UK, it culminated in um, uh, creating a community radio station at uh, the UK's oldest disability charity, Hannah's, and that was a lot of fun. We did, you know, that we did, we passed some milestones there. We had over fifty DJs with various disabilities doing shows, doing podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, running their own shows, doing their own thing. It was fantastic. 
quarter of a million show listens there it was really great so that was the most, yeah that was the most recent thing and then i can't let it lie i can't not do it so it's become the good morning portugal uh, podcast now <laughs> and then um, with all the technology changes i mean it's it's making it easier and easier right oh, it's fantastic. like once upon a time it was just on on spreaker no you know like no visuals and now you can just like rock up get well, this... people in and out it's really interactive this is what's Where changed. Do you think that's going to go um, I, I just think the, the lines are blurring between podcasting and live streaming. And it's lovely that people were doing a little niche like this, have the technology at their fingertips. Thanks to Facebook with all its faults. This is incredible. You know, they've given us this tele technology where you and I can do a Richard and Judy thing in our own home <laughs> because we've got Wi-Fi and because we've got fairly good computers and, you know, some cheap lighting and stuff. And anyone can do this. It's fantastic. So you can, you know, you don't have to, um, be you know you, people complain at the moment don't they about being spoon-fed the mainstream narrative now let me tell anyone let me tell any sort of you know 20 30 year olds who are complaining about that you want to try mainstream narrative with three channels on telly and no internet that was mainstream narrative back in those days um mm -hmm. in the decade you were born in mrs m um, that's when <laughs> that's when a mainstream narrative could be managed and, and spoon fed to people and it's still happening obviously but there's all there's all these niche possibilities we can mm. if we want to take responsibility for it and get off our butts and share a different kind of message that's exactly what we can do and people of a similar vibration wavelength um interest set whatever you call it can come together and do this and it's fantastic we live in an amazing age and that's what i think is happening mm. Um, is the um, is this convergence of all these different technologies, and it's a far cry from a, 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 an electric meter and two turntables, and having to take. Your <laughs> <laughs> I can just rock up in a, one one of our rooms, yeah. you know, and we've got a, what we call a studio here, and we can do this stuff. It's it's amazing. It's and we can be, you know, it's, it's, it's the crowdfunding model as well. I don't have to try mm -hmm. and get a job at a local radio station, and then try and wedge my or shoehorn my special interest into what they want me to do at a radio station. And it wouldn't happen, would it? I could, an English guy's not going to get a show in Portugal. So we can just do our own thing. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, I, I, I love what you said there because, you know, what we've done um, in moving to Portugal, which I'm sure a lot of people have done in moving to Portugal, is we've taken our um, feeling of possi possibly not quite fitting in or not feeling like the UK was a good match for us and and we've moved away it's a bit like you know looking at a different channel rather than looking at BBC ITV channel 4 etc yeah. um you know you find your own channel like you say you find your own vibration and I wonder if that is the same for everyone else that's here that's in the chat room you know did they feel they needed to find their own groove um that it was impossible to do in the UK you know yeah know, these are exciting times I would love so, to hear but I think people are doing that, aren't they? I mean, you, you, yeah. you come to carve your niche, and that means all sorts of things. That means, you know, like creating your own new home in, in your new country. And where, well, I think expats, explorers, pe immigrants, people who move away, part of it is, is that sort of d paradox dance of, like, fitting in and self-expression. So you go away mm -hmm. to, to be away from the confines and constraints of where you've come from, I think. Yes. And trying to do that in a new place where you might not want to stand out too much and cause too much of an irritation locally. But we are doing that dance, aren't we? I think all of us, because we want to mm. be free. I think it's about freedom and then it's mm. also about fitting in. And that's a really amazing dance that people do. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it's like one step forward, forward two back. And it's a, it's a hell of a balancing act. I'm not entirely sure I've got it right at the moment, but it's um it's a it's bouncing a up for sure it's a work in progress can i get, uh, share a yeah. few comments? um eloise yeah, absolutely to see you on the road live at events too uh this i this um plan that we is brewing at the moment to go to louis pato's vineyard and the alianza underground museum on a day trip what could possibly go wrong with that That's that a great is idea. an amazing day out we just need a driver 
And I know Peter's offered to drive on the way there, but not on the way back. That's a pretty smart move. <laughs> but we need a minibus, don't we, to drop us all off and, and an all-in price for that. And we could have such a good day doing that. Uh, Eloise, thank you for what you do with the wine club and for having that idea. And, and yeah, let's let's do some meetups at some point as well. It's great that there's a communication vehicle for those who want to come over. We're grateful for the service you provide. It's an absolute pleasure, Wayne. Um, looking forward to meeting you. And uh, like I said before, steer us in the direction of the information you want to hear. You know, it's, yeah. it's a very interactive medium and platform and, and service uh, that we're doing here. So tell us what you want to know. Look at this. Uh, Owen, who we've met on this journey, Mr. and Mrs. M, when am I going to cook for you all? Whenever you want. I mean, we, you know, You're we. So welcome. <laughs> this, Owen rocks up at your house and cooks for you. Like, you know, yes, please. <laughs> you name it. Um, been around the world, only two places I'd settle down with nature. Uh, I think that's rung a bell for you then, Wayne, the idea of connecting with nature. I just think that's trying to figure out exactly the sort of position of what we're doing here. It's about nature, right? Uh, so for, for Wayne, New Zealand and Portugal. Portugal ticks all the boxes. New mm. Zealand, unfortunately, has distance against it unless you really want the isolation. Yeah, so there's a lot to be said if you want to get away from everyone and everything New Zealand. But if you want to stay within a kind of metaphorical stone's throw of if, you know, if you're from Europe, Portugal's the place. Absolutely. And um, Ivan, good morning to you. Lovely to have your company this morning. Bon dia and parabéns. Um, yes, lovely to hear from you. Um, do say more about what you do, Ivan. I think we, you should share that here. Um, interesting, you came to Portugal in a camper van. Maybe we are following your route. Um, if you're following our route, make sure you are... Have insurance. Yeah, at least sponsored by FRAC. <laughs> That's another story. Too long to go into here. That's, it's amazing. <laughs> you've got good insurance because if you can get a very interesting plot twist uh, when it comes <laughs> to camper vans, obviously. Mm. Uh, created. I mean, we couldn't even see our kids at the back of the van, could we? When we set off, it was. It was are you all right? Are you all right back there? Yeah, we're all good. And we thought we should move a few boxes so we could actually see the children. <laughs> um, Emily <laughs> not only created their own groove, created their own grove. Nice one, and um, Love yeah, that. our own grove, our own groove to our own beat. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, and Portugal allows for that as well. I think. I think there's a, a very welcoming. Um, uh, attitude approach to that as you saw from those numbers you know the big numbers um, that i shared earlier on of um foreigners in portugal I incredible amount you know over half a million in a population of 10 million this is a, a very tolerant place um and a very open place uh, maybe like uh liking go back for the past freedom in nature okay like it was here in limbo Belgium, when we were teenagers yes there's a cry for this, isn't there? You know, people do remember what it's like to to be a child when you got booted out in the morning and you went and played in the woods and all that sort of stuff, which is unthinkable for some people now. Um, but yes, mm. us children were feral <laughs> at some, you know, some decades ago. Feral kids, and it, it didn't do us any harm, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, FD debate, yay, let's do meetups with responsible social distancing, of course. Um I think that's going to blow over eventually, isn't it? And we'll be able to get into the abrazos um, and to actually hug and touch each other appropriately. So happy to have found you <laughs> moving to Faro in the not too distant future. Estelle, Estelle Scott Nunes, a little bit of a mixture there, possibly of Portuguese and somewhere else. Um, moving to Faro in the not too distant future. Good luck in your journey. And um, uh, Claire and Steve, interesting to hear your story. Um, there's, there's a there's you know in these three years there's a lot to talk about you know um mm. not not just iphones in nappy water healing water it wasn't it wasn't nappy water it was healing water okay we'll check out eloise on <laughs> uh tomorrow it is friday today, isn't it tomorrow saturday is the first mm. of our sport new report. show isn't it yeah i know nothing about sport um but calvin said it would be a good idea He's going to embarrass and shame me. He's the man who knows about sport. I'm just going to be here sort of technically helping and learning. Uh, and then a week tomorrow will be our next wine club and details of which wine we are savouring um, will uh, to follow, I think, in the next um, 24 or 48 hours for our next wine <laughs> week tomorrow. Um, Ivan, a pleasure, Carl and Mrs. M. You are being you are known as Mrs. M now. Working I on am. the upcoming <laughs> issue of Relish Portugal today. Lots of good, great food and flavor-related stories, including you and Good Morning Portugal. Yay! Comes out on my <laughs> birthday as well. 
Um, you've got to check out Relish. Really beautifully put together, professionally done. I've got to say that. I mean, I, t I throw this together in case you hadn't noticed. But Ivan is a, is a brilliant writer, journalist, publisher who really uh, takes her time to produce a really quality product, celebrating all that's wonderful about food and wine culture of Portugal. So check that out, Relish Portugal, coming out um, on the 7th of July, I believe. Carl, you know a Sagittarius can send striking arrows. Yes, Jeannie, we know that. And I think that's a little um, uh, <laughs> not in your direction there, Louisa, isn't it? Tell well, yeah, for a couple of reasons, because, A, I am a Sagittarius, and and – B, I'm an astrologer, so yeah. <laughs> and that is another great story as well. You've managed to create an online business um, do, doing astrology, being an astrological coach for people. And mm. you've done that while, you know, you've had another child here in Portugal. That's another story, having a child in Portugal. And you've created mm. a business, you know, you've created a, a business yeah. and a livelihood uh, online, which is a fantastic story. Because, there's, you know, there's definitely um, – uh, there are podcasts, or it's, this is for someone else to do, isn't it? You know, how people make a living. Mm. On this journey mm. and I've yeah. got to say, you know you've done an amazing job creating a business whilst having a new baby and you know two other kids whilst we live in a building site etc etc <laughs> so well done to you it has it has not been the smoothest three years of my life I have to say but yeah it has happened yeah a bit like that film um field of dreams you know if you build it they will come okay um, it's been a work of faith <laughs> Yeah, um, so I suppose the, the, the expat explorer, Good Morning Portugal take on build it and they will come is like, just go and build it. <laughs> or just yeah. just just tr leave travel, explore and build something while you're doing all of that as well. Build it and hope for the best. Yeah, yeah. What else yeah. can you do? What else can yeah. you do? So well, I, I guess um, one of the things about like moving to another country is you do get that, that break in your usual um, routine so that you can try things out. It's very difficult to try something new out in your cultural norm country yeah because you've got all the expectations of everyone else that are just waiting for it to fail um <laughs> no, <but> when, <laughs> like you know like um uh you know when i've spoken to other astrologers you know they said oh yeah um it you can't make a living doing it and i was determined that i would be able to do that and that's happened so yes yeah. Excellent. Well done. All right. So let's... it's no longer a hobby. You know, it's a, it's while a... We're, we're talking about those naysayers, let's have a very quick look at pests. The, I was reminded oh, yeah. because you um, we were walking around the town the other day and you noticed one of those bag plastic bags of water with coins in that. Yes. People think defy flies. Right. Is that tell us about the theory of the coins? Um, in the water. Sorry. Um. Yeah, well, apparently, like, flies have got, um, like, within their eyes, they've got lots of little lenses all refracting off in different directions. Um, I only know that from um, um, our son's got a pair of these fly glasses that he puts on, and you can see as if you are a fly, which is really kind of cool, isn't it? Um, and so when you, when you put, apparently, when you put coins in a little Ziploc bag filled with water and you hang it in a window or by a door, as they fly towards your house, there'll be like loads and loads of reflections sent towards their millions of eyes. And, and it just really distorts everything for them. And, and it's kind of scary. And yet, even though that sounds like it might be sound, you've always laughed so much at me that I've never even trialed it. And <laughs> that would be such a simple thing to do. Um, I, don't but, want you know, to I felt peer pressured out of doing it. Okay. <laughs> I should be a little bit more open and, and um, tolerant about that, shouldn't I? But it just well, seems... Well, I know we're going to do um, a hacks show at some point, aren't we? You know, we've all got failed hacks that I've done from YouTube and they have gone spectacularly wrong. And it could be another one, you know, to join that. that Did video. anyone else, more on that matter, did anyone else buy um, about £300 worth of hardware or $300 or euros worth of hardware, nuts and bolts and terracotta pots and tea lights? <laughs> <laughs> the heating system that would heat your house for 300 years for five pence um having invested you know 300 quid in pot, terracotta pots and tea lights and nuts and bolts um that was I, another one i wanted to trial and that you just outright ridiculed me so much for i just like no i'm not going to do it the common theme also, in your go on go well, the common theme in your in your hack failures is me. It would seem so. I should I should get out of the way. Um, let's have a look at these because this is nice homesteading here. <laughs> um, this is homesteading. Here are the plants you can grow. 
the, the and thanks to Wayne for this actually pointed me in this direction. It's an old article. Thanks, these these are perennial um, techniques. I think nine incredible plants that repel flies. No need for chemicals. My name is Lisa. Uh, and that, this I'm reading the article. Also, I haven't suddenly changed my name. And I'm on a mission to expand my plant knowledge. I'll share what I learn as I develop my green thumb. Happy planting. Are you constantly reaching for a fly swatter in your house? You're not alone. Having flies buzzing around your head can endlessly be endlessly annoying and can be any time of year when they decide to make themselves at home. So we are in the fly season in Portugal just to locate this. And we use one of those electric tennis rackets. I would be embarrassed to say when I first got here, but now flies are so annoying. I just no mercy. And there's one that might be raising your ire as you look at it now. Like I'm all for live and let live, but flies don't let you live, do they? They land on your head and buzz and go in your ear, and they even, to add insult to injury, sometimes they're in a copulating aerial couple <laughs> on your face as if to sort of <laughs> literally taunt you, like we're having sex on your face now. This is what flies do. And that's why <laughs> they like, do. Uh, types of flies. We're not just talking about usual house flies here, though they are the main flying pest in the average house. You can also use house plants to repel fruit, fruit flies and even moths. So generally here, plants that repel flies and maybe other creatures. I've got to say, I'm so glad that in at number one, it's basil. And we've got a really good basil crop this year, haven't we? Uh, which we thought yeah. was strong first in our, in our amateur home study way. Look at this amazing tray of strawberries that turned out to be basil. So basil's good to grow. And, and this is great. You can't eat fly spray, can you? But you can eat yeah. basil. You know, this doubles up. This is what the homesteader hack should be. It's like not only does it repel pests, it's also great to eat. You know, that's fantastic. Um, number two, tansy. Do we have any tansy? No. No, okay. And do we see that in Portugal? But I can get some seeds for it. I mean, it's a funny smelling thing. Um, Just by that, do you mean also, unpleasant? Yeah, a little bit unpleasant. It's a little um, uh, – it's got a really strong woody smell. And, okay. And um, – Oh, yeah, it's actually, not very pleasant. It's, not, it's, it's also different that, it, in, that it's not a culinary herb whatsoever. In fact, it can be irritating to the skin and presumably yeah. the alimentary canal and should not be kept if you have kids or pets that might have access to it. So let's scroll quickly past that. Yeah. This, this we have got lots of and grows brilliantly yeah. all over Portugal. Wild, doesn't it? I mean, that, that little lane we walk down is just the air is filled with the scent of mint as you walk down there as, and you, as you're brushing against it. So mint is good apparently, for getting rid of pests. Mint can grow quite large. People complain about mint, don't they, because it grows too much. Um, you'll need good-sized pots and lots of space with at least four hours of bright sun. I think it's a very forgiving plant, uh, mint. So, And sweet woodruff. Do you think of dandruff when you hear of woodruff? No. Nope. In my mind. Just be you. <laughs> okay. Sweet woodruff. Are you familiar with that? Is that the plant we walk past quite a lot and we say, what is that smell? It could be, couldn't it? Sweet woodruff is a low it looks... ground clover with small white flowers. Not common oh, as a not... plant, but would work nicely in a hanging basket. So, sorry, I interrupted you. What were we going to say about sweet woodruff? No, I just realised. I just realised it's not the plant. I was thinking the leaves look very much like the shrub that has that very strong smell and the little flowers, but I can see it's not. Okay, so in the community there, in the chat, let us know what you're using, as well as electric tennis rackets, fly swatters, pesticide, or whatever. When you get thoroughly fed up, marigolds. These are a must yeah. have. For Sorts of reasons why should we have marigolds yeah. in the garden not just for flies mrs m well they're they're really good companion plants um so you know have loads and put them all around your brassicas and and whatnot and, and they're beautiful as well you know as flowers go they're just so natural looking you know a lot of i think a lot of, i find a lot of um grown flowers look really contrived you know like massive yes. um painters pom-poms but these guys are just so um kind of just themselves <laughs> that's why i like them yeah and they're so sunny and anything yeah. i can plant around my brassicas has, has a home in my garden yeah. um lavender another beautiful plant so many uses such a cheerful thing to see how are we getting on with lavender do we have much luck with that no not yet but okay. we'll, we'll get there we just okay. need to find All a right. load Definitely on the list of pest repellents. A strong floral scent is just perfect to keep away flies, moths, as well as mosquitoes, ants, and even spiders. But we want spiders, don't we? Except for the ones that bite us. Mm. Rosemary, lovely, strong yeah. um, aroma as well. And beautiful. Look at it. That's beautiful. Mm. Oh, we had a question in our Happy Homesteaders group. Why were Katia's rosemary plants going brown? What would you think that is? Any ideas? I don't know. I did see that, and I didn't answer it because 
it would have just been a guess. Yeah, um, okay. Well, that never stopped any mine, guard. Ours are doing that a little bit at the moment as well, actually. So I'm looking forward to the answer. Okay, so anyone who knows that, why are the rosemary leaves turning from that lovely waxy green and rich green to a kind of pale brown? Um, and of course, I mentioned the Happy Homesteaders. That's our group of the Good Morning Portugal live stream. Do join the Happy Homesteaders. Some really good stuff in there. And a, a, another fantastic, wonderful group of people, a subset of this wonderful group here. Uh, Citronella, have we grown that? No, but I've got some seeds. I, um, I've got a lot of these in organic seed form that I brought over with us so fantastic you'll get planting with those and this is the traditional um mosquito repellent isn't it citronella candle mm -hmm. citronella oil um but you can grow it here too and that looks like it's a good ground cover plant as well it's pretty big isn't it yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. so um and this to me lives in the hack thing right yeah they're too sensitive like if you if you force feed like if we had that one of those our kids would find an old fly and chuck it in and tease it and then it would just die anyway i've never had any success with those me neither so you think they to get yourself, overstimulated yeah you're a cheap shop or car boot seller or whatever you see a venus fly trap you buy <laughs> it, you're anything that my fly problems are over because i bought a fly trap okay mm. and then you realize that the kill rate of a venus fly trap is it eats one fly every three every months week or something <laughs> yeah it's really slow <laughs> and the kid I think I, th it. I think I think it would be lovely to have a little um you know carnivorous plant section you know how people have um, a really nice succulent shelf or something like that I'd love to have yeah. um, an area with lots of different carnivorous plants because I think there's some really interesting designs and I, I think it's good to um I mean, we watched a lovely video last night of someone's garden and he's just put lots and lots of different things in. It's really biodiverse and the diversity of having a carnivorous plant would be interesting, you know. Um, but I think that's the only reason that I'd ever have that in our house or garden, yeah, and just kids, to create interest. Yeah, and kids love poking huh? them. Don't they? Kids love poking them. Yeah. And I, that's really strenuous, isn't it? And if, uh, if a carnivorous plant has to close on a false alarm. I think that does, that does kill them off in the end, doesn't it? So you have to be really yeah, careful. Yeah, uh, they're quite nervous plants, I think. Yeah. No, it's not good. Okay. Um, if we say goodbye to Ivan at this point, we are going on a bit today. Uh, must get going. Lovely show and thrilled with Islam. <laughs> 300. 300 saw the movie again. I like to think of myself as a Spartan among broadcasters. Um, obviously, <laughs> and I have done it naked with my chiseled pe pecs only yeah. a few years ago as well. But I just need one of those capes, mm. don't I? Jared Butler was. Um, thank you, Ivan. Have a great day to you, um, Eloise. Those nasty biting ones that dive bomb you in the garden. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, the mosquitoes have the kind of courtesy to nibble you and you do, and they're kind of in and gone. And they also do that weird matrix thing, don't they, where they disappear midair. They just go. Yeah, like when you go like that and you think you've got them. Yes. Like, where the hell do they go? And they've gone into yeah. another dimension. But I've noticed that yeah. there are these little flies now that actually – hurt when they bite you mm. you did my um what did the barber call it the school the the the, the it, yes. it was the virus cut the virus yeah. scalping i thought it was you say or the cut creeper. yeah and um you were cutting my hair yesterday in the garden obviously uh, au naturel getting all the clippings back into <laughs> the um no one wants to be yeah, <laughs> out, out now yeah can you imagine that if, if people are boasting about putting their beard trimmings in the compost you're thinking <laughs> <laughs> I'll, bring pizza. I'll bring a pizza but yeah eloise these nasty little biting things and you can feel them biting into you I, I, that's the mm. first for me. Uh, and i was feeling that whilst you i nearly got you to gouge my head as i slapped a fly on my leg yesterday that would have been a, <laughs> a another story I've, but... I've got a recommendation actually um Ledum 30 which is um a homeopathic remedy and you can order it online um yeah. it's entirely up to you if you believe in homeopathy or not but we have some Ledum 30 um, and I think we've got Ledum 200 um, for different kinds of animal bites and it is I'm going to say alleged because obviously I'm not a homeopath but I do have um, lots of successful experience of um, using homeopathy uh, for different things as guided by a homeopath but Ledum is is the rem the go-to remedy for animal bites um, and I think one of the things it, it's able to do is to um, prepare your body for the shock of um, the like saliva from the other animal and stuff. So it, it kind of negates the effects 
Um, so it just like when you put lead in, when you take a little bit of lead in, it um, the itching kind of subsides quite quickly. And we've all used it in our family in the last few days, haven't we? We have. You've asked for it. Digby's <laughs> asked for it, and it does provide relief. Not for not forever, but you know, it it provides relief for a good half a day or so. It, yes, um, and it's all and, natural. And you, if you don't believe in homeopathy, you can get a catapult and fire the little white balls. Up. <laughs> That could be also fun, couldn't it? Everything should be <laughs> multitasking and multiple yeah. use in the homestead. And and yeah, Gary, I yeah. think the, the horse flies as well. God, they can give you a nasty bite. Uh, mm. it, there's a universal um, dislike here, I think. Ugh, flies. Had the worst night last night and nearly swatted Mariana, my girlfriend. Oops. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> she's still talking to you. But that's going to be a bit frightening, isn't it, when you wake up in the night and there's somebody... <laughs> flexing their muscles trying to kill a fly <laughs> within inches of you i uh, hope she's okay lots of love to you mariana and what is a calponina with mint is that a drink i'm thinking genie might be thinking it's a cocktail so you can you mm. can repel flies with the mint and then put it put it in your cocktail. is that what a calponina is i'm not sure no idea okay but yes i'm sure mint, someone will tell us in the chat room mint is very good for drinks okay so yeah we've nearly done an hour today but so just very quickly one more resource to share with you, and I'll put this in the um, in the links in the um, uh, blog uh, on coffee.com forward slash Carl Munson. That's where all everything goes now. I put the video, the podcast, and all the links to what we've talked about, coffee.com forward slash uh, Carl Munson, where, of course, if you want to support the show with seeds, buy us a packet of seeds, you can do that there as well. Muscles, you flatter me, Carl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think of us, all of us men in this group as like, the men of 300, Spartans, all of us, the Spartans of homesteading. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely visual. Oh. <laughs> um, one more. Then. Love, can I just, oh, oh, yeah. go on, I was just about to ask you a question. Please Maybe do. it's the last question we should ask. Okay. Um, what for the next 300 shows, like you've got 300 shows under your belt now of, of, of Good Morning Portugal. Yeah. What's going to, oh, goodbye to ticks. Sorry, yeah. my attention okay. is gone. I, I know I no longer want to know about um, well, your I plans wonder. for the next 300 shows. We'll, we'll finish on that because I, I don't want to keep people too yeah. long. We're really indulge yeah. us every this one. We're very glad of it. But this just looks like too good a resource not to share. So I will share it in the blog. Yeah. Ticks are a concern. I've not seen a uh, like a pancake uh, uh, tick not, before. That's looks a, like he's got a mirror on his back. He's, he's blinging it, isn't he? He's a special kind yeah. of tick got sort of articulated different colored joints there he almost looks quite attractive um but these critters mm. are really grim and um the thing that i was interested in here was uh, a lot of us have pets on the homestead and and mm. this very nicely to three ways to protect your dog from ticks and fleas and there are some natural uh, approaches there as well um whether or not they work i don't know but i mean i think it's good to start with something natural and work your way mm. up rather bringing in the napalm from the get-go so um yeah. i'll put the links in rather than keep you too long and just maybe a couple of minutes on yeah what so where to from here on in you're saying for the, yeah uh, for the next 300 shows <laughs> oh okay but i can't do that i can't answer that yet until we've included these comments lavender oil okay. in your sun cream um That's Gary, good idea. Gary has, has an aromatherapy training this is what you discover when you when you start to you know talk and collaborate with people like we're doing um, Gary has a fantastic essential oil insight, and he's saying there, uh, lavender oil in your sun cream, great idea. Um, I was told to put the back of a hot spoon, as hot as you can stand on the bite, and then add some tea tree, blended, on the site, worked very well, and stopped the itching. Kind of takes your mind wow. off it. You've been scolded yeah. instead of bitten. <laughs> that's, that's really old school. Uh, helps with sunburn as well, the lavender oil um and genie oh ingredients of a calperinia here we go you said she, she would tell us a half a lime half to two teaspoons of super fine sugar to taste two ounces of gas cassasha cassa cassasa garnish and lime wheel i still don't know what that is is this to put is this to wear or to drink or to eat or what but thank you uh, we it will... sounds it sounds good enough to drink and also put on your skin Yes. Um, and Lisa asking the dreaded question, is there Lyme disease in Portugal? Mm. I think, yeah, whatever there are ticks, yeah. there's Lyme disease. And we did cover this. There is a tick special, can you believe it, in one of the podcasts uh, where we really went into some detail about it. 
um, about how to take them off, how to, I mean, some people just say you should put them in sellotape and keep them in the freezer so that if you do develop some symptoms, you can take the actual tick to the mm -hmm. medical facility you go to. So people, you know, I mean, yes, but it's, a, it's a serious concern um, and there are many ways of approaching it. Um, but mm. well, our daughter, our um, eighteen-month-old daughter, or our daughter when she was eighteen months, got um, Lyme's disease, and so yeah. yeah, we've got a little bit of experience with that. <laughs> it's really, really foul. But it's not to say that you are um, um, your health is ruined forever. Um, she's actually bounced back, and all she's um, we we managed to cure her using um, antibiotics, which I didn't want to do really. But yeah. went with because I the 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 thought of it going into a full on Lyme's disease episode was just too much for me to bear. And yeah. also used homeopathy, and she's made an, a, an absolute full recovery. Yeah. So um, brilliant. We are discovering that I, I'm I'm feel a bit embarrassed. I didn't know the answer to this. Caipirinha is the national drink of Brazil. So schools ah. educated grateful to you and we should do it. i think that's a special i think that's a feature for the good morning portugal and we should mix it live and drink it we'll have a virgin version for breakfast because it sounds really refreshing and this is a fantastic contribution to the tick control debate Ooh. this is proper homesteading isn't it i've heard guinea fowl a great tick control on a homestead they are loud birds though um who doesn't mm. like a bird um that is a great tip and obviously you want the you want an ecological approach to this don't you rather than mm. necessarily chemical biological disruptive yeah. approach uh, brazilian cocktail caipirinha recipe ah i see uh, cachaça is rum we will do that we'll have a virgin version of it for breakfast and we might even do that in the evenings as well if we, when we do more good evening portugal stuff thank you for that genie for bringing that into the mix uh, this morning yeah so as i was saying that it, i think it's the the win-win ecological sustainable approach you want with pest control mm -hmm. as you as we are with everything and that answers your question of um the um the we you know what for the next 300 episodes where do we want to be in 600 1000 episodes time and that i think is to be part of a network across portugal probably yeah. even the, probably even the world because there are a lot of similar themes that are transnational of people mm -hmm homesteading becoming more independent becoming more interdependent and less dependent on all the old things that we are discovering in this time of history aren't supporting us as we as well as we might have hoped and by that i yeah. mean you know the, the financial system the economic system the political system um, system they're, they're kind of collapsing at the moment mm. and you know i don't mean to be a doom monger but it's there it's happening in front of our eyes that you know it, it's not it's not all it was cracked up to be it's not what we believed it to be and they haven't got the answers we haven't got the answers i'm not going to make it us and them it's our collective responsibility to deal with all of it in a different way we are seeing it's not working we need to implement things that are working and i really believe that this idea back to nature be a meerkat not an ostrich live on the ground don't stick your head in the ground is the mm. way for me for the next 300 episodes and we will be celebrating with caipirinhas uh, my wife says fd devane will happily make it for us fantastic we can be raising glasses of caipirinha on episode 600 born in south africa living in the uk for 19 years my late husband was portuguese looking forward to my future in faro so another caipirinha to caipirinha to raise there for you estelle and a wonderful show today thanks you too let's leave it there thank <laughs> you Gary, for that. Thank you to all of you who make this such a pleasure and a joy uh, to reach this milestone and uh, hopefully many more. And uh, let's work together, be together and have fun together as we face these really interesting, challenging times ahead of us, because I think we can still have a have a ball doing it. Um, take care. Bye for now. Tologo. Thank you to you, Mrs. M, for your <laughs> um, Judy style intervention thanks for having me on your show my darling and thanks for doing it it's it's wonderful because uh, i i really appreciate the fact that you've made um sort of like roots out from our family into the community um in, in a way that's helping and supporting us too so i really appreciate you for it we feel like we've got a virtual big extended family <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's important it, it, isn't it even the weird uncle, you know who you are. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> the weird uncle. 
There's no weird uncle. <laughs> um, take care. Yeah. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. With Lots the of love. First off, take care. Hasta mañana. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.